Radiation on Earth's moon, radiation levels are found to be 200 times higher than what we have on Earth. This is what scientists have recorded. They've measured high levels of radiation on the surface of the moon. As humanity prepares to return with the Artemis mission, with the U.S. mission, by 2024. As we know, the moon is the farthest humans have ever traveled beyond our Earth, and starting and ending with NASA's Apollo program in the 1960s and 70s, and uh, the Artemis mission is called Artemis because Artemis was Apollo's sister, and Artemis will have the first female astronaut. Now, further travel to the solar system, fraught by perils, technological, natural alike with space radiation, Cosmic radiation, solar radiation being a major threat, besides other things. A journey to Mars would last between six and eight months and expose astronauts to an unprecedented level of radiation, putting the mission at jeopardy, of course. But the first measures of radiation levels on the moon's surface show that the Earth's moon might also be more hazardous than scientists previously believed. The measurements were carried out January of last year by the Chinese Chang's 4 probe that landed on the far side of the moon. In the new study published in Science Advances, Chinese and German scientists reported the data the probe collected, and the result was astonishing. The moon's radiation levels are more than 200 times higher than what we have on Earth. The measurements were made by the German-built lunar lander Neutron and Dosimetry LND instrument that was attached to the Chinese probe. The information was then used to calculate the equivalent dose, which is a measure of the biological effect of radiation. In space, most of this radiation is high-energy particles streaming from our sun. The protons that can travel the distance from the, Earth to the, uh, from the sun to the Earth 39, 93 million miles in less than one hour. On Earth, the planet's magnetic bubble, the magnetosphere of the Earth, protects us from most of this radiation. But in space, spacecraft and spacesuit are more vulnerable. Ruth and Lewis, engineer for NASA's human spaceflight program, says the danger of radiation is always present, whether you're in orbit, in transit, or on the planetary surface. From mitigation techniques to protecting and enclosures, we're considering this in every environment astronauts will be in. Now, since they know how radiation on the moon affects the body, it will be critical for long-time missions. As we said, the next generation of U.S. astronauts expected to return on the moon to the moon 2024 with NASA's Artemis program. And by 2028, the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, hopes to establish a sustained presence on the moon. Now, I don't know who's going to be paying for this and how long they will be sustaining that presence, because once it's there, it should always be, of course, paid for. Thomas Berger and of the German Aerospace Center in Cologne said the radiation exposure we've measured is a good benchmark for the radiation within an astronaut suit. The measurements show equivalent doses of about 60 microsieverts per hour. For comparison, the equivalent dose in Earth is about 200 times lower, he said. And the long-haul flight across the Atlantic has an equivalent dose of about 10 times lower. So astronauts flying to the moon would be expected uh, to be exposed to radiation for many days, which represents an additional risk, of course. Now, when Apollo 11 flew to the moon in 1969, that was the uh, first man um, stepping on the moon, the mission lasted eight days. During this mission, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent 21 hours on the moon, two and a half of which was spent outside of their spacecraft. And Apollo 17, the last lunar mission, logged more than 74 hours on the moon, Robert Wimmer, Schwein Gruber of, uh, from Kiel University said, we humans are not really made to withstand space radiation, but astronauts can and should shield themselves as far as possible during longer stays on the moon, for example, by covering their habitat with a thick layer of lunar soil. And Christine Helwig from German Aerospace Center said during long-term stays on the moon, the astronauts' risk of getting cancer and other diseases could thus be reduced. The scientists believe the findings will be critical, of course, for future missions to the Moon and Mars. And Schwein Gruber said, for example, if a manned mission departs for Mars, the new findings enable us to reliably estimate the anticipated radiation exposure in advance. 
That's why it's important that our detector also shows us to measure, allows us to measure the composition of the radiation. Well, this is, of course, a very big problem besides everything else that they have to contend with. This is by Sebastian Ketley on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.